Okay, so what I've done here is I've taken my solar panels, 250 watt solar panels, grand total of 100 watts there. And I got this off Craigslist for about 100 bucks uh, last September, September of 2014 in Portland. So the cost of solar has gone down. So for those of you that haven't yet um, got some panels or gone off grid or live without conventional electricity, uh, this is a good time to get some panels, do some experimenting, make sure everything works. Okay, so normally you don't want to use a really long cord, but this isn't giving us any problems. I'm getting a full reading. I've got the batteries topped off. It connects up into here. This is the receiver. Uh, I'm not going to go over electrical stuff. I'm not going to go over technical stuff. Some of you are a lot more familiar with the stuff than I am. Uh, the specific terminologies. Uh, but other than the basic positive, negative, this being positive, this being negative, we're not going to get too technical. This has already been adapted. We're going to be going back and forth. Okay, now this is a charge controller. And I have this strategically placed under the seat uh, in the kitchen area of this RV. So it's been, uh, it's not even mounted down and it doesn't really need to be. Over here, I have the inverter mounted to the wall and I have the wires going in through here. Coming out down there. And so the inverter connects to the battery through the positive negative cables down there. And so the power from the sun, the power from the solar panels is coming up through this cord right here. We've made a few drillings to make way for our cords. There's actually a total of five cords and we're going to go over this. I'm going to do the best I can to explain this. And I hope this is helpful to some people out there. So you can see how easy this is. Of course, once you get it wired up, once you get it installed and you get the necessary things uh, screwed in. This is the power from the sun right here. And on the other side of this is a plug-in, as you saw. And it comes in here, positive, negative. Now, when you're dealing with white and black cables, the black cable is positive and the white cable is negative. Okay? In this case, anytime you have a red and a black, the red is the positive, the black is the negative. Okay, the red is the positive, the black is the negative when dealing with red and black. When dealing with black and white, the black is the positive, the white is the negative. I hope that makes sense. So we have the power from the sun coming in through this cord that's been adapted. And we have three sections here. This is one brand of charge controller. It is the NetMeter Solar LCD30. If we type all that into YouTube, a, uh, a basic tutorial will come up, uh, basically explain how this works. Uh, this is a leftover um, tool, really, from the, uh, the project on the trailer, and I'm now incorporating it into the, uh, the RV. So the power comes in from the sun into here, and there's a little uh, picture there of solar panels, so you get a visual. Solar goes in here, positive, negative, okay? Now here... It goes after it's regulated. It sends the proper amount, not too much. Uh, it sends the proper amount of juice out to the battery. And so I'm going to get here a little closer. See that solar panel? You can barely see it. That's a picture of a solar panel. That's a picture of the battery. So in this middle section, we'll call this section 3 and 4, or slot 3 and 4 out of 6. This is going out to the battery. Okay, this is the battery. I only have this connected to one battery, not two. This is the aux battery for the motorhome. So this is actually charging, believe it or not. It will power the lights in there, but not a whole lot. So I'm not really going to connect this to the aux system. It's going to be independent, even though this tray holds two batteries. These are two different systems. This system is connected to the motorhome. This system is connected to the solar, solar only. I also have another marine grade battery. It doesn't seem to hold a charge very well. So what I'm doing is I'm basically only connecting this to one battery. If I get more batteries later on, maybe I'll rotate out the batteries. If one gets drained down at night and I'm giving it a lot of usage, the one that's charged, for example, could be put on here. It doesn't take long to unscrew this, uh, uninstall this and whatnot. So, 
This is the positive, this is the negative. And as you can see, it's been fastened down here. This is an add-on because this was loose before and this could definitely cause an ungrounding situation. This can cause some sort of a short if this were to fall and hit this in uh, the wrong way and cause a problem. So basically we have the positive here and the negative here. So this is how the battery is being charged. The solar panels are going in to the charge controller and the charge controller is spitting out the juice to the battery. Now, here is how I get power for the computer or what other appliance I may have that's within the uh, appropriate uh, wattage. Here's how I get power. Okay. Today these cords were just installed. The inverter was just installed. And it was mounted at a uh, convenient place, so not too far from the desk. And I can add something, of course, to this. For example, something like a surge protector or other device could be added to this if there's multiple things to plug in. Of course, there's much better inverters than this. As time goes on, I'll probably get more inverters. With this particular inverter, which is available at Walmart for $40, you want to get backup fuses. And the cool thing about backup fuses being on the inverter is you can change them out. There are some inverters from Harbor Freight where if you accidentally uh, confuse your positive for your negative, maybe you're connecting a battery in a low light situation and you make an accident, well the thing's going to blow. The fuses are going to blow. And I've had that happen to me many times. So you want to make sure you don't get your positive and your negative uh, confused. If that does happen, in some cases, it is repairable if you have backup fuses. So with the inverter here, this is going to make things a lot more convenient. I've got the wiring right here. Comes out through here. And through here. And down there. It connects the battery. So we have a total of five cords. So going over the options here, we're at 100%. 13.9 volts. Uh, it's taking in about 3.2 amps at the moment. And so there's different kinds of charge controllers, but to have something where you can push a button and it'll show you different things, uh, that's definitely something that can help you quite a bit. Now, there's a sixth slot here, fifth and sixth. This would go out to an extra wiring system. So th this, for example, could turn on and off your lights. So you can have an ex extra system running off of this, maybe a 12 volt. I had a little system running off of that in the uh, microhome on wheels. So I'm not gonna be adding an extra system because this motorhome already has a system. These, for example, these lights are running off the aux battery. Okay. So that is a separate system. So being that I don't really have a lot of devices, here is one computer and I have another computer. And I was actually charging two computers at once on this very desk. This is also something I picked up from Harbor Freight for about 30 bucks. So when I'm in a situation where I can charge my batteries manually, uh, it's definitely a good thing to do. It's not always easy when in the city or traveling uh, to just pull out your solar panels on the side of the road and charge them. But I'll tell you what, these have been out here all day flat about nine or ten and they've been doing really really well seen the the sun come up from here and we got a little haze going on today so it's not a perfectly clear day but at least 85 percent clear these have been flat here and they've given a, a pretty decent charge there is a uh, a longer cord we've been using and i didn't lose any power by using a longer cord but it is recommended to use shorter cords to retain the power and that makes common sense but if i'm going to be stationary for a long period of time uh, the goal would be to get to the top of the motorhome and basically find a place for them here in the summertime and during seasons where there's a lot of light uh, 
it's not a big deal to just leave this flat. It's when it's um, when you're getting less light, when it's winter, when the sun sets uh, a little earlier. That's when it's more important to get at the right angle with the sun. And there's different attachments, things that one could add. I don't have one right now. So right now I'm just doing it flat. And this is the internet that I've been using, the Verizon Jetpack prepaid. I get about 10 gigs for 90 bucks. It's a horrible deal. I've used up quite a bit of it in about a week. And I am looking for other options. But the, uh, the positive aspect of Verizon is you can travel the country. And it's available in quite a few places because there's more cell phone towers. So it's definitely a deal with the devil, a dance with the devil. And I'm definitely still looking for other options and suggestions. And these are some zip ties here. To keep it all nice and neat. There's the five cables coming out through the holes that have been drilled. And now I'm gonna connect. I'm gonna connect these. These have been measured out to be the proper length. Okay. So we've got the the inverter pulling power from the battery, and the battery is receiving power from the solar panels via this white and black cord here. Okay, you normally don't see black and red together, but in this case, because of the pairing, because of how this works, uh, everything is just fine. This is all set to go. This is all set to be pushed back. So I can do that with my knee. Turn that there. Okay. Yeah, we can see that's charging there. So basically, the maintenance for this mostly the plugging in, the connecting, the disconnecting it's all done right here in this region.